Hello everybody, welcome to my next creation. I have been commissioned to do a wine glass. This is a lovely wine glass. Nice size, nice shape. And I am putting some dog roses, which are sort of Christmas roses, a couple of roses on the base of the bowl of this wine glass. And then on the back, front, or whichever way you happen to be holding it, is a little bee flying. I've very, very simply sketched it on already. And just holding a little bit of white cloth behind it, you can see very simple sketches. One bloom on the front, one on the back, and a few leaves. And there's the little bee at the back. I think it's going to be really pretty. It's a, a popular subject having a flower and a bee um, in sort of a 3D using the front and the back of a glass. I love doing that. Quite often do sunflowers, but anyway, um, this is a Christmas rose. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is sketch the basic outlines that I've done with the black and I'm going to do it with a very very light stone so that it's not going to go deep into the glass but so that it gives me a very clear outline so I can see where I'm going and I will not be using a white black background I will be using the dark background so that um, because you've you've done a little bit of engraving all of a sudden it's white so then it won't show up against the white so in goes the dark background and that engraving will show up and especially with a good light on it it'll be perfect to follow right I'm going to first of all give you a little tip because I did check this glass for stress lines and it's something that a glass engraver um, I say should do most glasses are fine but it's an interesting thing to do and quite useful if you are working on a glass that you are not used to um, and you just want to check and what happens is it's in the process of finishing off a glass in the factory when they are preparing the top so that it's nice and smooth the rim so that it's nice and smooth it is reheated and all the little molecules jump up and down and if it is not cooled off slow enough, it, they do not knit back together. And so you end up with an invisible stress line. And if you do that, if you go over that line and upset it, it will ruin the glass, it will crack. Sometimes when you're not even here, while you're sleeping at home, come back the next day and the top has been taken off. I have one to show you. Hold on a second. Right, so here is what I thought was a very, very nice wine glass. Uh, it's quite old. I've had it a long time. But if you can imagine, that was it. Lovely. I did a beautiful green man on it. It was for a festival. And thank goodness nobody bought it. Because it was sitting here the one night, my display cabinet. And the next morning, I came in and that. In fact, it was sitting around the base as though its pants had fallen down. And I took one look at that. I just couldn't believe my eyes. And basically, I didn't check this for stress lines. And clearly it had a very bad one. And my little leaves had gone right to the top of the well to the line itself not to the top of the glass and it's usually about a centimeter and a half somewhere around there that the stress line tends to be sometimes lower and sometimes higher but that's sort of the norm and uh well there you go i've kept it to show my students um and it's such a pretty because it was such beautiful glass and rather rather fun little green man if you can call a green man fun anyway um, so this is what we're checking for let's see 
I have checked that glass. That glass is fine. But I'm going to show you one that I know has got a stress line. And I'm going to take the label off because I don't think it's a good idea to leave the label on. Um, right. Yeah, it's a very, very nice, heavy-based whiskey glass. It is stunning. Lovely, lovely to work on. It's not crystal. It's crystal light, so it's a modern lead-free crystal. However, I know that this has a very bad stress line, which is fine as long as you don't engrave over it. So what you need to do, you have two pieces of Polaroid film. Okay. Not sure how how easy they are to come by. I have got a small sheet, small amount left, um, which basically I've been selling to my students that come and spend a day with me. Um, but you must be able to get it somewhere on the internet. And I have heard of people using old Polaroid sunglasses. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. You need a good light source. So there's the light source you need to basically, I hold it in two fingers, you have that one there and that one there, so one in front of the other, and then you turn it until it goes dark, right? I'm going to zoom this in, here is your dark film, here is the glass, let's see, oh. you can you see that can you see that line there there is a distinct sort of shadow of a line and that is a stress line and for an engraver hmm, you want to avoid that if you engrave underneath that that doesn't matter but you don't want to engrave on it so what, what I do is I put my finger where it is, the top of my finger, and I will make a mark with a pen. Basically, it's about there, and you cannot see it with the naked eye. As per usual, headband magnifier, glasses, and my mask. And I have the, the glasses on top of the mask so that my um, breathing doesn't upset the glasses too much. If I have the glasses there and the mask on top in no time at all it fogs up. I have a dust extractor as well which if I get really heavy into the engraving if it's very very dusty then I will put that on but it's actually quite noisy. Um, it should be all right. I've got a little white Arkansas stone and that is all I'm going to use at the moment, dry, to run around the outline very roughly. A little bit, I'll be a little bit more careful with the bee, of course. I love the fact that it sounds like a bee in a little honey pot. Yeah. 
tiny little impression really. Making, I'm just going to dig straight into those eyes straight away because this is the tool that I would be using. Slightly deep. I'm not going to do those delicate little jobbies on the top just yet because this is too thick for that. The wings are going to be basically not defined because this little fellow is flying quite fast. So So, should be able to take this away now, and you can see the white that the little Arkansas stone has uh, made on the glass. And it's so smooth, you know, it hasn't gone deep at all, which is my intention, so that it's, you know, you can, um, you can work with it very easily, you're not going to get any hard outlines that you don't want and that you're trying to cover up. So, okie dokie. Let's get stuck in. Let's get stuck in. Right, I've got my drip feed system. A very, very complicated. Uh, let's see, I'm going to take the camera off here so that you can have a look. There you go one bottle. Gosh, my electric cable doesn't go very high. There we are, one bo bottle hanging up with a two-way gang bell. Actually, this is a three-way that I've had to put a little bit of white tack on top to stop the air going in. Um, and then literally just the little tube and you siphon up hang on there we go basically it siphons the water down and out so I gave it a little suck and to get it going and let's turn the drip down to about that sort of pace enough to just keep um, the flow so it keeps washing the glass dust off and that's another reason why um, you know if I'm not doing too much work it's not going to go up into my lungs because um, it is wet so I'm going to use a diamond burr there there's a diamond burr and we're going to just get some movement going. To do what? I'm going to use a bigger one. The larger the space, the larger the burr. Especially initially. I'm just going to get diving in there with a nice big one. There's so many different ways of doing this. Many different ways of doing this. start off at the top I'm pressing relatively deep and then I'm coming up shallow I'm going with the with the flow the shape of the petal see if I can zoom in closer yeah 
edges and that I can neaten later. I am having to do this at a funny angle so that you can see it. Keeping this quite simple. too deep because it's not the thickest of glasses but it's not too bad because we're down at the base which is where it is going to be thicker but um, it's not that thick and then this one will come over the top can you see that yeah As you can see, deeper on the outside, pressing down harder and then flicking up so it's really shallow in the middle. This one can be behind those two. So again, keeping it very simple. Often when working on commission, you are having to keep to the customer's budget. So where you would like to absolutely go to town and cover the whole glass in the most magnificent roses, you can't always do that if they have a budget that they specified. Not 
just fine. Quite frankly, one single little rose on the front of the glass is just as beautiful and equally as well received by whoever it's been given to. They'll be delighted. Right, so I've just very basically done all these leaves. They're very wet, so it's not very, very clear for you to see. And so I'm going to take this little diamond coated burr. This is actually a nice uh, scented diamond, which means that it's got the diamond coating going all the way through the burr. So it lasts a long time and obviously is much more expensive, but it's worth it. Now I'm going to very simply do the stems. a little leaf down there. Hmm, it's hiding. Let me see. Oh gosh. Where is it? I'd outlined it. A little bit. Oh, is my towel gone? The little bit that's underneath is very shallow. Just that, get that to dry. And obviously, the, that little leaf is folding over. So the bits that are underneath are very shallow, and I will be polishing those slightly so that they are have a shadow. And then you can see that, that they folded behind. Anyway, um, right, where were we? We were doing the stems. slightly worn down green stone which is quite soft and you will see that it'll produce a half turn. I'm just covering an area that's all just so that there's no clear glass and I just want to smooth that I say I am keeping this pretty simple. So let's do a little bit of shading. So for the shading I'm going to use a 
a soft grey rubber. First of all, I'll dry the glass. I just like to use a normal kitchen towel, nice and clean and soft. In the old, old days, when I had babies, my babies are in their 30s now, but <laughs> when I had babies, I used to use the old terry nappies, the cotton nappies that we had in those days. There was no such thing as disposables. And they were brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant for drying the glass. So there we go, that's the flowers. You can see the little bee waiting to be done at the back there. Okay. Right, so we're going to use um, this soft grey rubber burr just get a bit of shading Remember, these are your own little creations. You don't know where these little flowers are, where they've been. Has it just been raining? Is the sun shining? Have they just had beetles crawling all over them? Have they just had bees visiting them? Now, I'm expecting I'll want a bit of dark, very dark in the middle. This is a hard black rubber. So I'm just going to add a little bit of variety of shade in here. 